<laughs> this is like a real face right here, <laughs> but just like, what the f He's just like, did Mark Hoppus really just push me out of the way to <laughs> grab my camera? <laughs> Hey friends, it's your girl Emily Curl with iHeartRadio and today we are doing our series frame by frame. We have Cole and Bardo from Beauty School Dropout and we're talking about the song and music video for Almost Famous featuring Mark Hoppus. Hi guys, it's good to see you. What's up? Thanks for having us. Thank you so much for being here. We're excited. It's one of our favorite series. So we're doing frame by frame where we picked out key moments from the music video that we're going to go through. And I want you to share any behind the scenes stories. Tell us how it all went down. And before we even get into that, give us the overview. First of all, how did this music video come about, especially the fact that it's featuring Mark? Um, and what was the inspiration behind the song that led to this video? God, we went through so many different ideas. And uh, originally, we wanted to do this whole complex storyline. and all these, it just would have been too many bells and whistles. And we were like, wow, like, what can we do that's simple, but still impactful? And I forget who it was that brought it up. And then, but like that essentially elaborated into like, let's make a music video of a music video. <laughs> and you have a really intense boss. So let's start with our first frame. This was my favorite opener possibly ever. <laughs> my favorite part, get these guys out of their shitty clothes. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> what a way to start. So funny. Okay, so we get this opening. Let's dive into Mark for a second. I want to get the background story here. How did you guys first originally meet Mark? And then tell me the story of how it came to be that he was in the video. We met Mark because he's a partner in our label. And when we were going through the process of getting courted by our label, Verse Wire, he, we met with him and it hit it off. And it was just kind of a surreal experience. And he's just like, yeah, you guys are really cool. Let's, let's do this thing. And so we started riding together and hanging out. And the song came out of it. And he's like, I, I you know, he, he but honestly was just like, I really love this song. And originally he wasn't on the song, but it was one of those things where we're like, wait a second, the, the topic is so special for like what we're going through. And it's so, it relates so much to like our real life experience. And it would be cool to have the other side of that, which is the, the someone who is famous because basically it was written from our perspective but we're almost there. we asked mark we're like when we came back to write his part with him we we're like yo like do you ever have moments where you just like hate being famous and like things are really frustrating or people treat you like you know whatever and he's like no <laughs> <laughs> okay never mind <laughs> No, the video, so I'm curious, how much of this, like even this first part, was scripted versus just improv of him roasting you guys? Largely unscripted. Mark is an improv legend. Like that, this man deserves an Oscar. Every time we're on any set with him, he's just like one-liners off the dome, but new ones each time. So every time someone yells action, he just has a new thing. And it's like hard to keep a straight face because you're like, that wasn't what you said last time and it's even funnier. <laughs> And we see also Mark mentions in our next frame, he constantly talks about Todd. Is Todd a real person or is this a make believe character? <laughs> I just no, that was, that was his, he, that morning he showed up and he's like, yeah, like I was sitting there in my closet. I'm trying to figure out who should be this, like my assistant. And I feel like Todd is a really good name. And he had all these like, he was like practicing all these kind of like concepts and like running us by. I feel like full method actor vibes, yeah. Another thing to add about this is he showed up to set wearing his Blink shirt. And that wasn't planned. That that just was him showing up wearing a Blink 182 shirt. Like, seriously. Wait, that's and so he, funny he, because, you know, I didn't even notice that he was wearing it. Is he wearing it in this first shot? He's wearing yeah. a Blink 182 shirt the entire time. and. He basically pulls up and we're like, oh, sick shirt. And he's like, oh yeah, you know, I assumed you guys would probably have something for me or whatever. And we're like, no, like, you're going to stay in that shirt. <laughs> I literally sent an itemized list. I was like, all right, like three blazers, with two pairs of pants, like, cool. That will make it's it. It's even cool. funnier that he's in the Blame I Do t-shirt now. <laughs> That's hysterical. Which brings me to my next question is, did you guys have any tips or teasers? Like, did you know that Blink-182 was getting back together at this time? Did he tell you? Going on tour? Did he give you that that tidbit at least? I don't know if we can confirm or not. We knew. We knew it though. No, we, 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 had, we, had, we had the inside information for like months in advance. But the whole time that I knew, I was like, I know something that so many people would kill to know and I can't say anything. Anytime something was leaked about it, I was like, 
what if I let it slip? Like I was like expecting the end of the video to be like, Did I say and the cul <laughs> and the culprit is Bardo from Beauty School. Oh, you know, Damn it. It. But, uh, it was good. We, we made it through. No one, no one leaked anything, but we're good. Oh my God. Did you almost have any slip ups? Either of you? No, we well, were pretty good. We we're pretty good about it. I told my dad. <laughs> what, what'd your dad say? He mentioned something. He hit me up being like, oh, did you hear? And I was like, well, yes, I did. Insider edition. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's jump into the actual creative of the video because I feel like, feel like it also speaks to you guys as a band. Um, so our next frame, we sort of have this makeover sequence. And I'm curious creatively, you're obviously making a statement here. Tell us a little bit about this choice to include this. This one particularly was actually kind of improv because like we had an idea of shooting something in that room, but we didn't exactly know we wanted to do like all the different keyframes of, of like everybody getting makeovers and doing the whole thing. It was like originally supposed to be one shot that was like, I talked about doing like a tight frame crop where it's pretty much just this shot, but like a lot quicker and like in and out of the video, not like such a moment. And then it elaborated into this thing because the, the zebra wall with the lighting lampy thing was great. And we're just like, fuck it, let's get everybody to do it and like make it more of, a, of an impactful moment than just like one arousing shot. Yeah, and like for you guys, for people just discovering your music, how would you describe yourselves as a band? Outlandish. I don't know. We're pretty. We're pretty nutty. I think our personalities are nutty. I think our songs are looking kind of sad most of the time, but <laughs> they always have kind of a dark twist to them. But I think that's also why like our personalities are fun because like when we play live, we're pretty fun and eccentric and funny, and we make jokes. And I think it's the juxtaposition of that is cool. Like you need, yeah, you, know, you need you, both. Yeah. We don't take our we don't take ourselves too seriously, but we like just music that's heavy and loud and that sparks mosh pits. The sparks mosh pits. <laughs> I love that. All right, let's go into our next frame. So here we jump in more to Mark directing on scene. We see you guys in the outfits here, really getting into character. Yeah. I'm curious, let's go back to the production day. Was Mark there the whole time? What did it look like for you guys actually shooting this on set? Paint the scene for us. Yeah, Mark was there the whole day. Um, what, I think we started probably at like nine, ended at like four or five. Like it's actually pretty yeah, it's pretty yeah that's not bad it's like one work day yeah everything kind of just finishes all in one place too by the way so it's like if we were we didn't have to move location all of these rooms are like in yeah okay yeah we're, we're pretty gun and gun like half the time we're like oh what can we do here we have like 30 minutes to kill let's just film this little like behind the scenes moment or even like down to like the outfits which i want to add this little thing about our outfits that we're wearing in this what like the idea is mark wants to put us in these suits that we hate and we turn into something else. And so we're like, well, what do we do? So we go down to the fashion district in in, um, in LA and we find this suit store where you get <laughs> you get two suits for 50 bucks. And so <laughs> we found these like red suits. We almost did these like black ones with stripes and we got all the different ones. And me and Beepus went down and we just found these suits. We're like, oh, these are perfect. And we liked the suits so much that we're like, let's just start wearing these all the time. So now if you see any of our live videos, this is what we wear on stage. And so, but we've kind of, we've edited them and thrashed them a little bit and cropped them and cut holes in them and whatever. But it's like, these are our now kind of like our super suits that we wear out when we're performing. So Can I just say, I love that because y'all look fire in the suits. Like I actually really like the suits. I was hoping you were yeah. gonna be like, we threw them away. I'm glad that you guys also <laughs> like, like them. <laughs> yeah, but those would be other iterations of, in other eras of the Beauty School Dropout outfits, but we just love fashion and we love playing dress up all the time. and. I think this is our way to express that. So. Oh, that's so cool. Um, let's go into our next frame because I wanted to highlight this moment as well where we get some more banter. The band doesn't see it, but I see it past them. There's no vision here. If they just shut their damn mouths. <laughs> Um, that line made me laugh out loud. And I'm curious for you guys as a band, like again, you're emerging, you're sort of creating your, yourself, your vibe, your aura, your style, getting fans on board. Did you have, you know, people, you know, when you're working with different people or maybe in the past, like that did try to control your image, maybe like this? Again, I know this is a parody, obviously, but was that ever a real thing that happened as a band? I think we were largely tapping into like how we are just painfully neurotic about overseeing everything that goes into our whole thing, which obviously creates a lot of resistance when people try and get us to do things that we're not interested in or like don't feel like is accustomed to the brand and the image in the world that we are building. So that was kind of, I think, where a lot of this stemmed from was just like, um, just about all this is improv. 
everything that had dialogue in it pretty much was improv. But all the bitching, and I don't want to wear a suit, and I don't like my makeup like this, gotta stop. We're losing light. Todd! So funny. What did that initial ask look like to be like, Mark, can you be on the song? He loved the song from the beginning. And also, can you be in the video? How do you approach Mark Hoppus with that? Well, when we wrote it, like I said, mid-session, honestly, I kind of had the thought of like, wait, it'd be really cool to have the other side of the story, which is, you know, we're almost famous, but have our mentor saying, hey, I am famous. And here's what I've learned. And I had had this thought, like, as you're writing the song, and we wrote it with Andrew Goldstein, who's another amazing writer and producer. And I didn't say anything in that initial session, but I told the boys after, I was like, hey, what if we did this? And they're like, okay, that's cool. Um, but Mark had said in the, you know, in the past, like, hey, I would love to hop on any song you guys will have me on. And so I'm like, well, you want to do this one? Because he specifically expressed how much he liked this song. And so we're like, well, do you just want to do it? It kind of makes sense. So it, it just honestly was the perfect storm. Is that insane to hear someone like that say, I want to be on your song? A little bit, yeah. I, I honestly always talk about how it's crazier that it doesn't feel that crazy. Mm. You know what I mean? If that makes any sense. Like, yeah. it, it seems like I would be like passing out or fainting or something like that because this is like hearing, you know, this is someone I listened to on my iPod when I was like 10 and I would just, you know, blast Blink-182 all the time. But it's just like, I don't know. It, it's one of those things I think it's it's one percent every day and you just keep pushing the needle a little and little, little little bit and eventually you're at your childhood idol's house writing a song and you're just like yeah i've earned this and oh so I, I think that's that's the weirdest thing and it's like you know i mean i say that in the most humble way possible but i think that's like you realize everyone's a person at the end of the day and it's like our come up has been very different it's like our come up isn't this like massive like oh my god we have a hit song and we're vastly famous now it's like it's like We've been out here grinding on this. So it's like, slowly but surely, we're getting it and we're meeting our people. It's cool. What was, or what was, what is your favorite Blink song? For me, Adam's song, I think is my favorite. I love it. My Age Again. Right, you can't go wrong. It's so yeah. good. I was like, so I know good. that's like a cliche, but it's so good. <laughs> It's so good. Um, okay, we have a few more for you. I just want to briefly touch on this next part because watching the video again, we're looking for the details. And there's these little moments that I found where I could see like the crew break character. And the, I love this one where you actually see him laughing. Christian. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. I don't think he was expecting Mark to come up. Because we were like, we told Mark like, yo, like go. Because the whole thing is that we had another camera filming the crew, right? So. Right to like capture their reactions. But I, honestly, in that scene, I don't think Christian knew that Mark was gonna do that. And I think he was low-key a little like, what is this dude doing? Like, cause he pushed him out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a real face right here. <laughs> but just like, what the fuck? It's just like, did Mark Hoppus really just push me out of the way to <laughs> grab my camera? <laughs> Well, I was curious when I was watching this, I was like, is this their, is this y'all's actual crew or did you guys cast extras? But it's funny, so this actually is your crew that you work with. This is like, this these is are like my yeah. from fucking like seventh grade. <laughs> Stop. Please show him that this part of the video that we made a cameo of his face in our frame by frame. <laughs> oh yeah, we will. Um, okay, so let's jump ahead because I want to talk about, <laughs> walk me through this scene. We can just touch on it briefly. We've talked a lot about it, but walk me through this scene. This had to be fun for you guys. I don't know. It was it was just in the flow. We we're like, okay, how do we bring this all together and put a bow on it? Like, fuck it, we're gonna throw Mark in a bathroom and like put a chair that's not even blocking the doorknob. I don't know if you noticed that that little. Wait, thing. I didn't, but that's funny. Oh, that's funny. So let's go to our next one. Oh, let's go. All right, Mark. Euphoria. Let's get out of here. <laughs> I gotta go. I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that is the the girl in this clip is Royal and the Servant. This is Beepus's real life girlfriend. Um, and this is, you know, we wanted to give her a, a cameo in the video. Like, what do we do? Like, how do we fit this in? And we're like, okay, well maybe we have, you know, after everything hits the fan and we're like, lock Mark in the bathroom, let's have them just making out. And originally the scene was a lot more like foul. Like it was like, <laughs> like, like he got all that. When we wrote the, the actual, like the you know, treatment for it, it was like, oh, and our label was like, you can't put that in there. So we <laughs> eliminated that. So, y so you actually had it in the video and then you had to take it out? Well, no, like like the original concept for this scene was a lot more oh, like explicit. Oh, oh. A lot, see, a lot more a lot more X-rated. And we're like, ooh, I don't know if, I don't know if we can do that. 
And and so we ended up just, you know, let's just have him making out. And then with the Euphoria line, when Mark comes in, he's like, hey, Euphoria, that was off the dump. That was like another, I was like, oh my God, Mark. Like, Are you guys like hysterically getting... laughing off camera? That was my oh, favorite line in the whole no, video. Like, Oh, like not. we're like trying not to laugh because it's rolling and like you even hear us like you start giggling in the background you, you know it's just like it's like how do you come up with this what is this euphoria <laughs> um yeah, was like, she okay was the girlfriend okay like when she crawls oh, yeah. out oh, yeah. she's <laughs> she's oh she's great and that actually was like such an accident he did not mean to push her like that was so <laughs> when he runs back to her i love it no i'm so glad oh, yeah. you guys included the, the bloopers again the whole video is so good we have this video that's out now, your new album, We Made Plans and God Laughed, is also out now, which congratulations, you're on tour. Thank where you. can the audience, for everyone watching, obviously they're finding your music, where can they find you on socials? And um, and then tell us a little bit about the album too. Instagram, we're bsd.wave. Every social handle is different, by the way, so sorry for the reach around. But IG is bsd.wave, Twitter is bsd underscore dot wave, TikTok is beauty.school.dropout. Oh. I'm Billy Hutzler, Bardo. You can find all our personals kind of through the band pages. Um, and then the album, yeah, the album's out. Our little love child is running around making a muck of the world. You know, for fans who are just discovering your music too, if they want to listen to one song off the album, other than the one that we just talked about, Almost Famous, what song should it be that you feel like really like describes the band? We made plans to go left, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or y yeah, 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 yeah. Or See You in Hell. The whole or, album, really. <laughs> Just start, yeah, from start to finish. That's what we need. <laughs> Pretty much. Thanks for checking out our Frame by Frame. Make sure you go and watch the music video for Almost Famous featuring Mark Hoppus by Beauty School Dropout. And don't forget to stream their new album on iHeartRadio. We'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.